and yes. we're back for part four and we were talking about the public interest so maybe if we we try that again so um public interest it is in the public's interest to understand that um 90 percent of rtos are uh, are actually doing the right thing um everyone you know to try and be a hundred percent compliant all of the time um is a really hard task and and to um work with um, other RTOs and see how they um, endure. Um, it's mind-boggling how anyone can actually get through the day sometimes. So um, the public needs to understand that um, we are um, businesses that have employees um, that um, have to talk to their employees and say, well, I'm sorry, but you know, we've got to close the doors or I can't keep you on. You know, I had to, um, uh, I couldn't keep uh, my trainers on and my admin, uh, administration people on when I was going through the AAT um, process. So, um, you know, that wasn't, that wasn't a nice thing to um, go through that. Um, and I've seen many other RTOs that have had to, you know, close the doors because of processes um, that you know, in some instance, was because they didn't do their uh, NCVR, um, the data reporting, data reporting, and that's because they had zero students. So, you know, um, and they were nearly shut down. Uh, however, um, that that process has just changed in the last three weeks, apparently. Um, so, you know, we, the public needs to understand that a lot of RTOs are being closed down for minor administration processes. All of mine was about how you format or how they would like to see it on a bit of paper. Um, I never changed my process of how my training uh, programs worked throughout the whole program. It was always the same. It was just in a different format. And in the end, at the AAT, when it, crunch, when it came to the crunch, they just said, okay, because too much stuff came up that was detrimental to ASQA and if I took it further and, and sometimes I wish I had it um, and it's not too late mm, I know um, but um, uh, it was damning evidence absolutely damning evidence and not at a low scale we're not just talking auditors so um, I think the public needs to actually understand that you sign that petition and if we can get an inquiry to happen um, into ASQA's practices um, and have an open and honest discussion about that then uh, we may actually be able to come over that hurdle um, of where we're at in our sector and start to actually do what we do best and actually train and assess people. Absolutely. And and save some of those skills that are going to die out because mm. our specialists are walking away because they've been intimidated or they just can't fight the fight anymore because it costs too much money and they're being prevented access to merits review. They've been unlawfully cancelled or wrongfully cancelled, a um, whole range of things. Um, I, I guess, though, in terms of the public interest, one of the important things is that people realise the Australian public has a, a right to know that there are stories that are so much more than what they're hearing in the media and what the politicians and the ministers are making them believe. Um, what we see is media manipulating the view and publishing all these stories that we're not saying are untrue. Um, they're actually the minority of the vet sector and, and there is often very little that is positive um, that is being reported. And there are many, many, many good providers around the country that are constantly being cancelled um, for, for all the wrong reasons and with, with bad intentions. And often, in, in my experience, it's about ego protection. Um, I, I'm not sure and I'm not asking you to comment, jo Joanne, but that has definitely been my experience. Yeah, um, look, in my experience through my AAT hearing, uh, few egos got bruised um, and 
I think that may have uh, may have harmed me. Um, however, sometimes people need to hear that. Well, you're not qualified. Uh, the Vet Regulator uh, Act says that you need to have certain qualifications to come and audit me. Um, and uh, and the know. Australian public deserve to know yeah. that all of these providers that are being closed down do not have the qualifications and, and experience. And I'm not saying that that's the case for all auditors, don't get me wrong, because I, I don't know that, but certainly there are a large majority of auditors who do not meet the requirements under the standards for Vet Regulators 2015. Mm. So there's some food for thought there. And, um, you know, and the other part of that is that I do believe that there are a, a few auditors that have actually left um, ASQA's organisation qualified, highly regulated uh, and, you know, fair, fair auditors um, that uh, have left because of the pressures and the, um, the uh, practices that they have been asked to engage in. Yeah. Fantastic. What's the next thing? I, I think the next thing is final thoughts and, and you had some final thoughts on the Chief Commissioner and there was something else on oh, that list yeah. as well. So, um, yep, it's great that we've seen that the Chief Commissioner has moved on. However, um, you know, it's quite easy to get rid of a Chief Commissioner. They were put in by politicians. Politicians can take them away. Um, a bit like ripping off a band-aid. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great token. Um, however, you know, we need to actually get down to uh, look at who it is that is um, uh, uh, forcing uh, these administration procedures to be um, carried out and in an unethical and illegal um, way um, and make these people accountable. Um, uh, uh, they are not only harming us as RTOs, they are harming the actual vet sector and they are... Uh, and the opportunity for future generations yeah. to get a, a valuable skill. Mm. Yeah, from someone that's, you know, been through this sector and, and lived in this sector, all my life basically um, yeah it's it, it's damning when you see that happen and you start to think well what's going to happen to our sector yeah. our sector you know um, we are we are the vet sector um, and when we've got uh, public servants that are telling us that you don't know what you're doing or you're wrong in your job role, uh, that's a bit of an issue. Yeah. And there was one more thing under final thoughts that we had listed there. What was that? Hang on. Back in. Oh, the petition is a yeah, scam. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that was uh, the note that we made previously that it had come to our attention that someone was going around promoting that the petition is a scam. And just to repeat, the petition is not a scam. It is on the Commonwealth Parliament website and it was put together by a member of the Vet Reform Group who is a lawyer and also an RTO owner. It is a legitimate petition. So do you have any other final thoughts for us tonight, Joanne? So my final thoughts are as a um, RTO um, owner, um, we all need to stand up and um, be heard um, and not um, cower and, and not uh, worry about if our name's going to be put there or, or, or not because as a united front um, we are you know you're only as weak you're only as strong as your weakest link yeah okay uh, it's a <laughs> it's a saying that I I learnt back in my army day um, we as an organisation need to be strong and stay strong and, and, and link together and uh, be more um, proactive in, in um, having our say um, and not sitting back and waiting for everyone else to do it. And it looks like we're going to cut off again, yep. so we'll come back in just a second.